Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people just like us. Whether you want to learn a specific skill or if you just want to try something for the fun of it, Skillshare is your place. I honestly just love that it makes trying new things so accessible and easy, but also gives you enough information to feel like you really understand it. I decided to try Andy Pizza's Unlock Your Creative Identity, not just because I like pizza. I honestly just love how fun he made it. And he said something that really resonated with me. He said that we often think that creativity is about thinking outside of the box, but really it's about creating our own. And whether you're a designer, a filmmaker, a writer or a chef, you can use whatever skills that you learn in this class and apply it to whatever you do. So if you want to try this class or thousands of the other classes on Skillshare, the first thousand people to use the link in my description get a free trial to Skillshare's premium membership. And then it's just $10 per month after that. So go ahead and check them out. The link is below. Hey everyone, today I thought it would be really lovely to have a conversation about journaling and free writing. I've had so many people message me about it and I would love to share my experience with you all. So um, let's get right into it. I've been doing journaling for mm, at least 10 years on and off and I'd probably say to me journaling is a journey that you're going on that you have absolutely no idea where you're going to end up. It's like a discovery of everything from your thoughts, your um, hidden traumas, your patterns, your um, likes, your dislikes. I honestly just see it as a way that I was able to finally get to know myself, like build a trusting relationship with myself and all through the process of just writing. I honestly think that journaling is for everyone. Like whether you are a man or a woman, whether you feel like you've been through crazy traumas in your life or whether you feel like you've had a pretty great life, I see it as a point of growth and we are always able to grow. Growth is something that never ever stops and so if there is a practice like journaling that has the possibility of making you better each day, each month, each year. So I think it's for everyone. Journaling is for absolutely everybody no matter what place you are in life. I think I started journaling about 10 years ago on and off and at first you know there are so many different types of journaling I started off doing journaling to do with my eating habits because I was studying nutrition and so I was really intrigued about food and how I was fueling my body and so I had a food journal to start off with when I actually moved to New York I decided that I really need to understand myself and in my yoga teacher training I was taught about journaling and at first I started writing and I was like, this feels so lame. Like, why am I writing to myself? Who am I even writing to? But as I stuck with it, because I had seen all these people and read about all these people who would just constantly say how magical it's been for them. And I genuinely do believe, like I do my meditation, that if you practice something for long enough, then it must have some sort of an effect. So I believed in that and I kept trying. And so the first thing I started with, because I found it difficult to just free write or write from my mind or from my heart, I started by writing down thoughts that I was having when I would meet people that didn't match my, my thoughts in my mind. And so the words that I was saying were different from the words that my mind was saying. And I really wanted to match those two because I had heard that integrity is when your words and your actions and the words that you're speaking and the way that your heart feels are all aligned and all harmonious. And so I started writing down everything that my mind was thinking versus what my mouth was saying. And so I just found that that was so eye-opening for me because I was living life constantly conflicted. It had become normality for me to be saying one thing and feeling another way. And so that, that was my first experience of really journaling and really getting into my thoughts deeper. Yeah, when I first started journaling, um, I mean, I remember the first time and probably even so now I'm like, who am I writing to? What is this? Like, is this going to have to be dear diary stuff? I can't do this. And a lot of the times I would sit there just being like, I don't know what to write. This is pathetic. It took me a really long time to, re to get into the concept of writing from my heart and with no filter. And it was scary. It was scary to see the things that were coming out of my, my mouth. It was scary to see the things that were trapped in my mind. But um, through the fear and through the discomfort came freedom, I felt. And it was a really beautiful feeling of, you can go through that journey within 10 minutes of writing. You can feel fear, you can feel sadness, you can feel anger, and then suddenly you can feel peace because you've just let it all out. And so um, at the beginning it's tough, but I would say just stick through it because it is definitely worth the experience. It was scary because 
I think that we are very good at trapping things in our mind. There are certain things that people remind me of that I have absolutely no recollection of. Like our mind is so powerful that it can literally forget things completely if you have been through enough pain to push you there. That concept of when it starts coming back to you, that feeling of when you're overwhelmed with, you've suddenly um, made your way through the surface layer, you've suddenly made your way through that box and you've opened it and then you're opening this other box and another box and then there's something that you've been keeping in your mind and in your heart for so long that you really didn't want to visit. But when I then visited those things, it connected me back to all the things which now are being affected because of it. And I could root back, oh, this is why I treat people like this. This is why I react like this. This is why I say these certain things. And so definitely that initial feeling of fear approaching something that you know you haven't wanted to for a long time or approaching something that you didn't even know existed in your mind. That's pretty scary. <laughs> So in my journal, if I flick through it, it goes from everything from my to-do list to my frustrations to my ambitions and my goals to sometimes not making any sense at all. It would just be words that I'm just throwing out there that are just stuck in my mind, song lyrics that I can't get out of my head. And then also solutions. I find that it is a place where not only are you venting, and I think that's what's really important about journaling to remember. Although it's a place where you can let loose and, and give out freely with no inhibitions, it's also a place for solutions. It's not just a place where you are wallowing in your distress or you are um, sitting in your sadness. It's a place where you can do all of those things, but with the, um, with, the, with the need and with the desire to come to a solution or to come to a better place. So I, I've just written about everything. It would be a, a, something that I would sit down and I would just write every single thing that comes to my mind. And sometimes what I would do is if certain topics have come to my mind, like, if I felt envious that day, if I felt anger that day, I would then track back my daily, my, my full day of how did that trigger come about? How did I end up saying those things? How did I get myself to a position where I was so agitated? And so tracking back your, um, almost your footsteps, it's like you're in, like I said, it's like you're on a journey and you've lost your way. You're basically tracking yourself back to figure out how did I even get to this point? So a lot of my thing is also tracking back in my day to see where that stemmed from, where my triggers for people come from. Sometimes it's just telling myself that I love myself and telling myself that it's okay if I made mistakes and reassuring myself. I think it's a place to build trust with yourself and love with yourself because when do we ever sit with ourselves? When do we ever speak to ourselves? Very rarely, until I started doing this, I didn't wanna have conversations with myself but we spend the most amount of time with ourselves, and so it makes sense for us to communicate with ourselves and really understand, um, yeah, spend time to understand ourselves, and it helps us to understand other people better then too. I felt just like with meditation, it had to be something that I was doing um, as a ritual, as something that I really dedicated myself to for a certain period of time because I wanted to see um, if it had an effect. And so I had noticed that in my meditation when I was regular and had a regulated practice with it, it showed results to me. So I did that with my journaling where it would be every morning. I am a morning person, so I really love getting a lot of my, um, I feel like it sets my day up. One, you can mind dump everything that you are holding onto from the previous day or from the previous evening. You can just explode onto a page and it almost feels like you're starting fresh, starting a new day properly. If I'm feeling a certain way and I find it, it's just running in my head over and over again, I'll sit down with pen and paper and I'll write it down. So I don't think you have to have like, it's only at this time and I'm gonna wait until this moment when I'm gonna sit down and write. No, you can keep a journal with you anywhere, anytime. Grab it, write an idea down, write down how you're feeling. Even Evening, mornings, during the day, you can journal anytime. It depends how you're feeling, depends what mood you're in, and depends what you want to say to yourself. I definitely started off being like, okay, I'm only gonna do 10 minutes. I'm gonna do 10 minutes of journaling and that's all I'm gonna do. And then you'll notice as you go along with your practice that 10 minutes will slowly turn into, or quickly turn into 30 minutes, and maybe even 60 minutes. And you'll just feel your heart pouring out and the time will go by and you won't even realize. So it can be half a page, it could be 10 pages in a different day. And maybe on one day it'll be a simple word. But um, the period of time, I would say a minimum of 10 minutes when you're starting because 
you have to allow your barriers and your shields to come down before while you're writing and allow yourself to um, take down all those personas that you are holding on to that you're used to sharing with the world and then stripping it all down so i'd say at least 10 minutes is necessary to get to the core of your heart um, in your writing and, and really see that you are opening up in the way you want to so there are so many of the common benefits that are spoken about. Yes, it helps to relieve stress. Yes, it helps to relieve tension in the body. You can release your emotions and it helps with your general well-being for sure. But I'd say the benefits I've seen have been, I realized every single part of my life is created or shared to somebody else. It's created to share to somebody else or somebody else inevitably is going to see it or experience it. And so we have, or I at least, have a natural tendency to screen for acceptability of others. Constantly screening. And, and I think actually it's something we all must do because we have the fear of being accepted. We have the fear of um, speaking in a way that pleases other people, um, whether it's subtle or whether it's gross. And it's the first time I was speaking and writing with no desire to show anybody else. But actually at first when I did start writing, I realized I was writing as if someone else was gonna read. The words I was using, whether you're using a bit more of like a posher word or you're using the right grammar or, you know, in my mind it'll be like, oh, but what if one day someone reads this journal? What if one day like Jay picks it up and he reads it? What if one day, you know, it's lying around and someone picks it up and they see, I can't write this in here. I can't let myself be seen in that way. That was in itself a very scary thing that I wasn't okay with someone seeing what was going on in my mind truly that it was I was trying to filter it in some way or screen it in some way just in case the world saw it just in case one other person saw it even people that I'm the most comfortable with just in case they saw it I wanted to change certain parts of it and so I think it's really important, especially because of the way world, the world is right now. I share things on social media all the time. I'm used to going through some sort of filter. As much as I try to keep my life as genuine as possible, it's always screened in some way. Like I said, whether it's language or whether it's the way that you present yourself, there's always some sort of screening. And so it's the only place, the only place on those pages are the only place that I feel I'm able to just see everything, everything that is just in myself to just do, write it and let it be there with no, with no filter, nothing at all. And actually stripping away that filter when you're writing, it takes time. It took me a good few months. If not still, I'm, I'm, I'm having to continue, now that I'm aware of it, I have to continually pull myself out of that, um, of that filter because I'm like, oh, I've just been on screen. And then suddenly I'm like writing in my journal and I notice myself, writing in the same way that I would normally act on my data and I'm like no you're fine like it's just me and you let's let's be real for a second that's probably been one of my favorite realizations and benefits of journaling is a moment of no filter a moment of no expectation no screening just raw and um, sometimes ugly and sometimes so beautiful and sometimes um, unexpected and wonderful but just at least it's real and uh, it's the real is something I can work with <laughs> another benefit that I have found is in the difference in my relationships I um, one it was a wonderful way to really think about what I wanted to say to someone methodically without just blurting it out where sometimes we can end up saying things that we don't mean Whereas this gave me a space to work through whatever it is I wanted to share with someone, whether it was good, whether it was bad, whether it was something that I wanted them to, that someone's hurt me. Um, it was a place where I was able to share, like I said, unfiltered and then be more mindful because taking into account other, you know, there's this concept of, I should be able to say whatever I want to the people that, that I love. I should be able to be as unfiltered as I want. But actually I think, I think that care is in, using our words wisely and I think that that's what journaling allows you to do is yes you can blurt it out but then think about how that person's going to feel care care is about thinking about how the other person feels and if you're sharing from a place of love you want to make sure that they're receiving from a place of love and in that way formulating the way that you want to say something to somebody I think journaling is a perfect place for that and I found that it's really helped my relationships whether it's with my mom whether it's with my husband um, I really noticed how it's made me express myself a lot better um, and also creating a relationship with myself instead of me 
going to somebody else straight away to ask them their opinion about something, to ask them what they think I should do in this situation, what they think I should do in work situations, my personal life, um, what dishes I should buy, every single thing. I was so used to asking other people because I did not trust myself enough to believe that my answer would be right. I did not, I, I, and why? Because I hadn't built up the trust with myself to do that. I hadn't spent the time, like I'd spent time with my mum since I've been born, spent time with my dad, spent time with my husband. We've spent so much time together that I trust their opinion. How am I gonna trust my own opinion if I've never taken it and if I've never spent time to find out what that opinion is? And so it's given me a space to feel confident in my own opinion, in my own views, in um, my own standards and my own values. So I don't always have to run to somebody else to tell me what to do in certain situations or how I should be feeling in certain situations. Um, and so relationships overall, I think with myself and with other people have drastically improved. And when I feel confident in myself, I feel I'm able to also give more to other people. If I feel confident in my own advice, I'm able to advise people better. And so just overall, just, just relationships are great, much better when you're journaling. <laughs> I say the last benefit that I can think of right now is that it is a place that you can notice your patterns. The patterns that are constantly reoccurring, whether it's on a monthly basis or even threading through your daily life. And so for me, that can be beneficial because it shows me, oh wow, like I'm so powerful in this area. This is my strength. But then also telling me this might be my weakness. And so it helps to identify and hone in on the things that we need to work on and the things that are our strengths as well, where we really show up to, for ourselves. Um, and in that way, I, I just think, you know, you don't know, you can't solve something that you don't know exists. And so it allows you to notice those habits, those patterns, um, those things about yourself that you need to adapt and um, those things about yourself that you feel really happy about and that you feel like you've really grown. And, and looking back in your journal, whether it's years or even whether it's months, you'll be like, wow, look at how I dealt with that situation versus how today I'm dealing with this situation, which is pretty much the same, but oh my goodness, what a huge difference it's made. And then you'll see the progress that you made and how that even came about. And so, yeah, that is, that is such a wonderful benefit too, because it just, I just think it helps you feel like you're in control of your own mind. And instead of your mind controlling you, you get to tell your mind how it is. <laughs> my key recommendations to anybody that's starting journaling is first off, like I said, let your pages be your own pages. Don't share it with anybody. Don't even have the want to share it with anybody. Um, let it be a sacred space for yourself. Um, but also I would say it's quite difficult not to judge yourself when you end up writing. When you end up writing in this way, you notice things about yourself. And I would say, don't judge yourself, be an observer. Observe your patterns. Don't dislike yourself for it, just like you would with a loved one. Treat yourself in the same way. A key aspect of journaling, like I said, it's not just the wallowing, it's not just the sitting in our self-pity, it is the reflection. If we write, right after you've finished, I would reflect back on what you have just written onto the page. And reflection leads to change, reflection leads to analysis, and reflection leads to growth. Don't just write the pages, shut the book and forget about it. Have it, make sure you are making a conscious, mindful effort to make those pages into a lesson, to create um, something that you're gonna take from all of that a little nugget of wisdom that you're gonna take with you throughout the rest of the day. I think writing and journaling without reflection, we'd be missing a huge, huge part of growth. I actually have this book, The Artist's Way. I did this probably about mm, six years ago. It's actually made to help you explore your creativity. But one thing that Julia Cameron recommends is the concept of free writing. She recommends it in the form of morning pages where you sit down and she recommends, I think, a minimum of four pages that you just keep writing and the difference is that in journaling you can stop and have thoughts and think about things but in free writing you just keep pen to paper and you just keep writing even if your mind is saying I don't know what to write I don't know what to write I don't know what to write and even if a whole page is filled with I don't know what to write the concept is that eventually you will let your guard down and your heart will stop freely flowing you just don't take your pen off the paper and I tried that and although it ended up being a muddle of everything from, like I said, my to-do list, but all in one to-do list, then what I was thinking about eating, then what I was thinking about doing for the rest of the day. Actually, when I started um, after my second or third page, I was finding it, it um, got rid of all that junk that I was 
covering myself up with and allowed the um, the parts that um, I probably didn't want to share come onto the page for that day. And so um, both are as effective, I feel. Um, journaling just gives you more time to think. It allows you to not act on your impulses. But I think free writing is good if you're used to holding back and you notice that you are someone who holds back while journaling. I would recommend trying free writing because it almost stops your mind from thinking too much about what you're writing and just lets you share. That's probably the, two, the main difference between journaling and free writing. But try both, see how you feel and see which one you connect to the most. My biggest epiphanies. One was that I was extremely judgmental when I thought I wasn't. And it was in the areas that I, it was because I have, I've grown up in a way where I had chosen not to do a lot of things that a lot of people around me chose to do. Like um, drinking alcohol, for example, or, um, you know, when I was at university, everybody around me would be doing um, shisha or like hookah, or they'd be smoking or they'd be, you know, they try a lot of things which I had, uh, abstain from not because I felt like I had to but because I felt like I really wanted to and it wasn't something I wanted to do. My teacher Radhana Swami talks about this a lot how sometimes you can you can be so noble in the way that you are acting that you, you, you actually infuse ego into it and then it becomes a place of superiority and I think I noticed that maybe mm, five six years ago and it was something that I I, I noticed was coming out in the way that I treated people, the way that I was speaking to people and the way that I was, I, was, I, would, I would be like, oh no, you know, I don't judge you. Of course not. You, you do what you want to do. I'll do what I do. Of course, I'm not a judgment. I'm spiritual. I'm not a judgmental person. And then I, in my, in my pages, when I would be writing, I'd be like, this doesn't seem like a non-judgmental person at all. <laughs> and it would be like a justification where I would be like, oh no, I'm not judging you, but, and then in my mind, I would still be thinking it. And so I think that was a really, really great realization I had. I'm so, I'm so grateful for journaling for that because I never ever, and I truly believe people feel judgment in the way that you speak to them. It either comes across condescending or it comes across like, I think I'm all high and mighty and what you're doing is wrong, but it's okay, you're a baby, it's fine. And so I think um, that was something I really worked on. And I worked on it through obviously writing, but also educating myself on um educating myself on sorry i wouldn't say educating on hearing about people who had lived different lives and come to the same point that i was at and so what it made me realize is that so many people go through so many different things in life to get to a point in life they don't have the same journey and so even if people were doing things that in my mind were bad before that just they needed to do those things to get them to the place that they're in now they needed to experience that there are people who need to experience different things in life to get to the point in life that they are now and i think it was it was just i'm so glad because i would have been such i, I mean i still am working on it but i would have been, ended up being such a mean person if that had kept building in my heart and i don't think i would have been able to um I don't think, in, I just didn't feel like I had integrity when, when that was happening in my heart. And still I check myself and I see it happening, but it's definitely more of a, I see things from a point of compassion a lot more rather than from a point of view of um, judgment. And the main thing I realized, I just kept writing down, I was like, you are not, like just because someone does something that you don't do, it doesn't mean that your evils or your negative qualities are any better than their negative qualities. We always try to blame other people and that's the blame game. It's like, it's easier to tell, to think that somebody else is doing something wrong and that whatever negative qualities you've got in your heart are somehow superior. But they're all exact, they're all, they're all negative qualities and they're all things we're working on. We're all just working on different things. And so my weeds are no, no better than someone else's weeds. And that's something I really, and, and I would write that over and over again. My weeds are no better than someone else's weeds. They're all just weeds. And so um, just writing and repetition also was great. It was sometimes it would just be pages and pages of that. My weeds are no better than, than other people's weeds. But um, I would say judgment was a big thing that was a huge epiphany for me because I really didn't think I was. <laughs> oh, I had an epiphany that I am such a people pleaser to the point of like, to the point where it didn't make me a good person. It made me a person that just wanted to be liked. And um, that was really hard for me because I do love making people laugh and I love making people joyful. And, and, in, and as much as that can be separate from me wanting to please people, 
it was scary because it was all intertwining. And so I was, I was doing things because I wanted to bring them joy, but with a huge attachment of wanting to be liked by them and doing things because I wanted to be liked by them. Let me cook you a meal. Let me do this. Let me do that. And I, I was definitely do a lot of acts of service to try and um, show people that I love them. And although that is a very sweet thing to do when it comes with the attachment of wanting someone to, it, it's like the thing of giving with no expectation wanting someone to like you is still an expectation and although it's not bad to have expectations and reciprocation in relationships having the giving with the one of wanting them just to like you and sometimes that took over the one of wanting to please them and it was more so wanting them to just like me so much and wanting them to know that I was the person that was there for them and one it, it became something which I then would come back and be so upset because obviously I was giving and I was almost over giving because it's overwhelming sometimes for some for other people to constantly keep receiving from someone when they're also not in the place to maybe give as much as the other person. So I was almost over giving that would maybe overwhelm people and because of the intention behind it wasn't as pure as it should have been. I always felt like it was tainted in a way the way that I was giving and so um yeah, I had to really work on that. I, ha I had to start giving from a place of love and joy rather than a place of wanting someone to like me because even if you do something perfectly in the way that they receive it, if their eyes are perceiving it in a different way, they may not even care. Like if that's not their love language, they may not care and you've put in all this effort just to please them. I mean, just so that they like you rather than just to give them joy. Um, so that was a difficult one. <laughs> yeah. And other things. Oh gosh, I've had so many, but... I say those are the two behavioral ones that stuck out to me. Any surprises? Yeah, I'd say my strengths were a surprise to me. I never really felt like I had strengths um, before I started spending time with myself and analyzing my thoughts. I would always say to like my, my mom and my dad, I was like, I just feel like I'm really average at stuff and I don't mind being average at stuff at all. Like, it's okay. I, I, I actually am I'm okay just being average at things and moving along life in that way. But it made me realize that just as I would tell every single person in my life that they are so special because of a specific reason, in, in a completely like ego-less way, it made genuinely help me realize where I could feel confident and what I did have to offer and what I did have to share. And all of those things for people, if you're like me, that generally don't feel that great about yourself a lot of the time, I think it's a really great surprise. Like I really enjoy the great surprises in journaling where... I'm like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know I had like a business mind in this way. Like, I know I don't have a, a numbers mind and I know I'm not very good with money because I'm not, but I'm, I love strategy and I love, cre I love creative ideas. And I didn't realize that like Jay, I would never think like Jay would need to come to me for any advice for work. But then he started coming to me about like the creative aspects of a lot of his work or ideas for videos. And when I would be writing about that, I was like, I think I gave really good ideas then. And like, oh my gosh, he actually thought they were good ideas and he actually used them. I had the habit of saying, oh, I'm not very good at it, so, you probably, so don't ask me about this. And that's what I would always say, like, oh, you should probably ask Jay, you should probably ask my mum, or you should probably ask this person. And I realised I was basically telling everybody not to come to me for anything, <laughs> and, um, except for like, oh, I'll feed you. And that was my go-to because it was something that was easy for me to do and because it was something I loved doing and because it was the only area I felt like I was able to give in, it was easy for me to be like, oh, it's fine, like, I'll just feed you all the time. But I realised that was actually my my defense mechanism because I, I, I didn't think I had anything else to offer and slowly allowed me to realize those, those little other bits that actually I do have to offer to other people. And um, yeah, those were really pleasant surprises. <laughs> Some of my strengths. I still find it so weird talking about strengths and not feeling like it's an ego thing. But I think my strengths are, um, yes, I love creative things. Like I love thinking of ideas of how to present something, whether it is in food or whether it's in like fun video ideas of um, adding joy into something, like adding a bit of fun into something. I think I am able to, to do because I really love experiencing it. Like I love experiencing fun and I think I'm, um, I'm able to do that and add little nuggets um, into different areas of my life in that way. Um, I also think um, I've noticed spontaneity, which is something I used to see as um, being a negative thing about myself because it made me a little bit disorganized. Um, I really love being spontaneous. I love just, you know, one day deciding that I want to 
do painting and the other day I want to go roller skating and another day and maybe I won't finish the tasks but I think it's quite nice to have a mind that is always ready to explore always willing to try something um, and never wanting to lose out on an opportunity that that has a potential of joy it may not but um, it yeah I think spontaneity is definitely something I have started to appreciate more about myself and always wanting to bring people together I really dislike when anybody in my circles or in in my life are not happy with one another I'm always trying to fix problems and at first I thought it was like oh, I'm just getting in the middle and I just you know I'm trying to just force connections that aren't supposed to be there but I think it's always nice having some if I can be a bridge in that way to bring people together, I think it's always worth the opportunity to give it a go at least once, even if I'm so annoying in the process. <laughs> so yeah, oh my gosh, that was a bit too much about myself. But let's get back to you. <laughs> so I hope that conversation was useful for you all. I would love to hear from you. Um, please share in the comments your experiences with journaling, any trouble that you're having with it. I would just, I would love to share it with you all and I would love to speak to you about it. So leave a comment below and um, happy journaling. If you like this video or even if you didn't like it at all, leave a comment anyway so I can get to know you just as you get to know me through my videos and we can build a conscious, loving community together. Eee!